For our graduates, today not only marks the accomplishment, the realization of many of your goals from the past few years, but it also marks an important moment of transition. Today stands as a conclusion of a chapter and the beginning of the next, a moment of pause in the space between. In the Jewish tradition, when you are studying one book of Torah and you finish one book and go to start the next, you fill the pause between the two by reciting the phrase, chazak, chazak, venit chazek, meaning, be strong, be strong, and our strength will grow. In the pause between chapters, we recognize the wisdom, the successes, the strength that we gained from that one chapter, and we take all that we gained as a launching pad into even more growth in the next. In this celebration, this pause between the chapters of your life. We say to you, chazak, chazak, venit chazek. May you draw strength and pride from your accomplishment, and may you continue to grow in that strength of self as you move forward. We'll close with a prayer for moments of transition. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam, shehechianu v'kiemanu v'kegianu lazman hazeh. Blessed are you, source of the universe, who gives us life, sustains us, and allows us to reach this sacred and special moment. Amen. Everyone, please be seated. Good morning. What a day. Yesterday we were melting and today for the first time 
in my experience, Pomona, it's not raining at graduation. <laughs> and it's perfect. Perfect because we are all here together on Marston Quad. This is a day to remember. This is the first time we've been able to come together since 2019. And are we all ready? Yes. We're ready! <laughs> On behalf of the trustees, of the faculty and staff of Pomona College, it is my privilege to welcome our senior class, their families, friends, and loved ones. It's our 129th commencement exercises today. I would like to express my deep gratitude to all of you here who have been supporting these extraordinary graduates from the time that they were so little through these times when they are so big. It is because of you that they are here. For a few years running, this was always on Mother's Day. Not this year, but every friend and family member who is here today, this is your day too. Thank you for the strength that you have given these graduates between the chapters, during the chapters, and at every moment that you have been with them in their lives. Whether you came here from nearby, from across the country, or around the world, we really wanna give you a round of applause for making this possible. When we are done, there will be a meal here on the quad. There will be opportunities to hug your students, uh, to thank the faculty who have guided them through this. Um, this will be a joyous day. And even as we are still processing the many challenges, the losses that COVID-19 brought to us all, this is a springtime of hope. And every graduate who will cross this stage today has met the extraordinary academic standards set by our faculty at Pomona College. By tradition, however, every year, our faculty vote to bestow our highest prize for students, the Rena Gurley Archibald Prize, uh, awarded to members of the graduating class with the highest academic achievement. This year, there are a record seven students who have perfect, unblemished transcripts. Those winners of the Rena Gurley Archibald High Prize are Jenny Rose Goodkin, Jared Anthony Mejia, Huang T. Min Nguyen. Sean William O'Connor. Nathan Shankar. Ilana Susan Shapiro. and Catherine Kini Shimomo, Shimomoto, excuse me, Shimomoto. Kimmy, yay. Congratulations. At Pomona, the classroom experience is extraordinary because of the faculty 
who leads it. And every year at this ceremony, our trustees bestow the highest prize we can offer to our faculty. Every year, the WIG Awards for Excellence in Teaching are granted by a committee of trustees and faculty based on ballots cast by our students. I'm going to ask each winner of the WIG Prize to stand if they are able. This is a surprise to all of them, so I'm going to drag this out. <laughs> Professor of Computer Science, Su Yi Chen. Assistant Professor of Economics, Malta Doy Bold. <laughs> Professor of Politics, Pierre Engelbert. <laughs> Assistant Professor of Media Studies, Ryan Engley. <laughs> Associate Professor of Politics, Amanda Hollis Brusky. Willard George Halstead, Zoology Professor of Biology, Nina Karnofsky. As well, Associate Professor of English, Jordan Kirk. Congratulations. We're also honored to have with us, along with our faculty, students, staff, and friends, 14 members of the college's board of trustees, led by our fearless chair, Samuel D. Glick, of the class of 2004. So today is a time to celebrate your personal achievement as well as everyone who helped you to get here today. In all the disruption, in all the adjustments, in all the tears, and the gnashing of teeth, and the awesome moments, the highs and the lows, this is a day of farewells, possibilities, and joy. You have earned this day, and I hope as you move across this stage, you do it with more pride than you have ever done anything in your life. This class has more grit than any other class in the history of Pomona College. Let's begin our joyful celebration. Good morning. Class of 2022, how you doing this morning? <laughs> okay. It is my pleasure to introduce our senior class president, Andrea Pierre. <laughs> she hails from Miami, Florida, and is a member of the fabulous Miami Posse. <laughs> Andrea arrived at Pomona with a desire to serve mentor and represent her classmates. She quickly engaged with ASPC to do just that. She has held a variety of representative positions including North Campus Rep, South Campus Rep, before holding her current role as Senior Class President. With the responsibility of building community and providing fun opportunities for seniors in the context of COVID, she hosted a range of activities including Las Vegas Senior Trip, <laughs> takeover of Frank Dining Hall with a chocolate fountain to allow for reminiscing of the early days of your sage hen life, and a really lovely reception at the Benson. 
Andrea has also been head mentor for MERGE, the, me the mentor group for multiracial and ethnic students. Andrea was a resident assistant and sponsor, shepherding students in their residential experience in Lyon Hall. In the academic arena, Andrea is a biology major with a desire to become a marine biologist and is headed off to California State University, Monterey Bay to study scientific illustration. We wish her <laughs> We wish her the very best in all of her future endeavors. Please join me in welcoming Andrea Pierre to the podium. Good morning, trustees, faculty, staff, family, friends, and my amazing class of 2022. <laughs> Thank you to Dean Pinkson for all of those wonderful wor words, but after hearing it all ro rolled out in order like that, it's pretty eye-opening, but not in the way you'd expect. I have only been here for four years, and one of those was spent under my covers on my laptop with both Zoom and Google open at the same time. <laughs> only four years to do all of that. All of the things that are gonna stay on my resume for what, maybe a year or two after this? <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know anything because at this moment, my heart and my brain are still trying to comprehend like what this means for all of us. <laughs> what does this mean for me and to my friends and to everyone I've met in between? Just think about it. To my fellow graduates, think about your four years for a second. Think about your college resume. Look at, look, about, look at where you came from and look at where you are. Aren't you proud? I know I am. I know that everyone that came out here today just to see you is proud. And I know I'm proud that this, gra I'm sorry. And I know I'm proud. This graduating class has some of the most outstanding people in it. And honestly, outstanding doesn't even begin to describe it. We are made up of scientists and athletes and artists and politicians and writers and future educators. And it took us just four years to sit right now and listen to speech after speech and then walk across the stage and grab our diplomas and then to just start anything. And I need you to know that this thing doesn't have to be school. It doesn't have to be your career. Just start anything. Just start living or resting or breathing. We have the time. We're what, 21, 22, maybe 23, regardless. <laughs> Tomorrow isn't promised for any of us. So after this moment, make sure you just take time to just be. <laughs> just four years, guys. It still astonishes me how we all have different stories and different backgrounds and we come from all over the world. And it's mind blowing to think about how we all did something completely different from the person sitting next to us during these past four years that brought us all to this very moment. But none of that matters, because at this moment, we're all sitting in the same spot, we're all gonna receive the same degree from the same school, and it's all meant to help us pursue our passions. <laughs> and honestly, I'm so ready for this whole ceremony thing to be over so that we can go out and change the world. I can't wait any longer. I am honored when I look back at where we started down on South Campus on moving day to living it up in Vegas together. <laughs> and we've had so many successes and so many failures, like a lot of failures, but it was only the beginning. In one of my courses this semester that focused on being human in STEM, I learned, I learned that failures and rejections are things that are meant to be celebrated. Things that are meant to remind us of what we've overcome because without them, Honestly, I wouldn't be standing here speaking to you all right now. I don't know if you remember, but I tried to be y'all's first year president too, and yeah, I was a bust, and you said no. <laughs> yeah. Um, but look at us now, look at me now, and look at where we are about to go. I'm gonna be honest, the future isn't looking too hot at the moment. As I stand here before you, there are people that I've never met before currently deciding what I can and cannot do with my body. The ice caps continue to melt. 
our summers get warmer and our winters get warmer. But regardless of all of that, I am overly confident in us and our generation and what we are going to do to and what we are going to accomplish after today for ourselves and for our world. I want to close by saying thank you for a moment. Thank you to my mother and father. <laughs> okay. Thank you for giving me the life that I've had and making me the person I am today. Thank you for sharing your talents, your intelligence, and your good looks. <laughs> um, I want to say thank you to my friends, my real friends, the ones that dragged me out of bed when I didn't want to move, the friends that celebrated everything that I achieved purely out of the love and support for me. And I want to say thank you for allowing me to celebrate your moments with you too. Thank you to my classmates and my fellow graduates because honestly, without you, these classes were not gonna get passed. <laughs> um, and thank you so much for all of your help and support. And thank you for always coming out and just being one of the best classes that this college will ever see. <laughs> and thank you to your parents for having a good time that one night that gave me the privilege to be a part of your class. <laughs> yes. And thank you for their support over these past four years and all the future ones to come. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you to my posse, thank you to ASBC, HRL, Professor Seligman, Karnofsky, and Whitaker. Thank you, thank you, thank you to Pomona College for giving me these past four years exactly as you presented them. I have a history here now and I am walking away with a future that involves all of you and all of the wonderful people I've met and made a connection with. This is not goodbye, but to my fellow graduates, I can't wait to save this planet alongside you all and see your names in lights. With love, as always, see you soon. She did it, huh? <laughs> All right. There's lots of tabs here, you know. Okay, there we go. Well, that's not it either. We'll find it. Thank you. Do I need it? There we go. It is my absolute honor to introduce our student speaker who was elected by the senior class for this amazing opportunity. Yes, she is the student body president, but it is not automatic that she would be your speaker today. Narali Devkin from Austin, Texas, has been an active and engaged student leader throughout her time at Pomona. She is committed to and concerned for all Pomona students and prospective students. She worked in the admissions office in various capacities, including tour guide, head tour guide and senior interviewer, giving her the opportunity to tell the story of Pomona and help recruit future Sage Hens to Pomona. Morali has also served on J-Board for three years, culminating as the appellate chair. J-Board people? No, hear you. <laughs> she, br <laughs> <They're hiding. laughs> she brought much experience and strength to her role of student body president and student co-chair of the Student Affairs Committee of the college's Board of Trustees. Her voice and her dedication to so many committees and campus efforts has significantly contributed to the successful addressing of many campus issues, especially this year with COVID. Having spent last summer as a corporate strategy, strategy intern at JP Morgan, Nurali is headed off to be uh, incoming associate at Boston Consulting Group. She will certainly be missed on campus, and my candy dish will miss providing her treats during our regular meetings. <laughs> we wish her much success and look forward to her remarks now. Please join me in welcoming her to the podium.
Hi, everybody. Good morning, President Starr, trustees, faculty, staff, family members, friends, and my beloved classmates. When I sat down this semester to sort through the vault of college memories we've had so far, French, Frank brunch on Sunday mornings, waiting in line for Yule Ball on a crisp Saturday night, going to an evening scam fest in Big Bridges, chatting with a classmate in line at Prairie Lunch, and the surprisingly intense euphoria of getting an anticipated class at registration were a few of the many versions of a memorable, yet at first glance, seemingly insignificant experience here at Pomona. Putting aside their temporality, their importance stood to me out to me as quite meaningful, as these were the moments I kept coming back to. These were the moments I could see myself thinking about with fellow alumni, describing to future interested Pomona students, and reminiscing on when we were older and grayer. And using this, day, this time I have and this stage as a vantage for reflection, I think there's something worth pointing out here for all of us, students, families, and community members alike. The merit of a fleeting instance, a fleeting interaction, which even in its lonesome, can provide a level of solace and connection which long outlasts its own presence. And the ways in which after this point, we'll likely never experience such perfectly crafted instances of fleeting community in this capacity ever again. The charm of college, the appreciation of the environment it creates, the want for more, kind of just hits you, or at least me, after it's all happened. And because of that, I think due to the inherent human struggle we have with patience and time and anticipation, I think we must and should and can cling to the fleeting, specific, sometimes even indescript feelings we, feel, we felt in the shortest of instances here at Pomona. The exact moment you click send on a semester's or year's worth of thesis work, press the Sakai submit button on the last assignment of undergrad, jumped into the pool during water polo national championships, <laughs> sang the last note at a choir concert, danced at Nochella, watched the end of a sunrise at Joshua Tree, or finished a plate of dumplings with friends in Chinatown. Looking back on our college years, yes, there have been countless moments of frustration where campus felt contradictory, where lapses of communication resulted in massive inconvenience, times when you wanted to disappear, or even when homework kind of felt just like the end of the world. But these describe pockets of stillness, of content, of happiness that one could find and pinpoint were truly what kept us going. Walking to class on a Monday morning, groggy and slightly annoyed, but then subsequently running into friends on the way to class, giving a couple hellos, some fist bumps, that always helped me feel better and left me in a greater capacity to take on the day than I had started. Or standing in ferry at the expo line waiting for bao buns or street tacos and sparking a conversation with the unforgettable dining staff about your weekend plans. Or sitting at an SEC table running into any of the staff members and mentors who continuously support the operations of a fully residential campus for over 1,700 students and cracking a joke or making them smile. Or even today, the countless number, the sheer number of people who helped it day in and day out to get us to this exact moment. In those moments, this, you realize this place is a lot bigger than yourself. And sometimes it feels lighter for you to remember that while we have our own problems individually that often do feel bigger than ourselves, we go through so much of this life together, physically, emotionally, and mentally. However sweet, fleeting, small, and insignificant they feel in the moment, whenever I'd sit down and think of these experiences together, I'd become overwhelmed with that feeling of fleeting comfort, of fleeting familiarity, and a fleeting community, which strung together made Pomona feel like a home. So now we celebrate that home, both the fleeting and the lasting. Celebrate friends winning awards and grants, celebrate grad school acceptances, celebrate fellowship and job offers, celebrate a research publication, a dodgeball AM win, a Groove Nation performance, an acapella concert on the steps, a theater show, or merely just getting to Friday in April. These are all fleeting moments in a way, right? The ethereal catharsis often disappearing almost immediately after the end of an event or deadline. But when you string them together, they start to feel real, tangible, and permanent. And they slowly become embedded in your memory as something that you call is connected to this place, not the annoyance or the discomfort 
or the anger, but as time fades, some of those fleeting memories may be all that you need to hold on and to remember and to cherish about your days at Pomona. You know, this is a big day. I hope a lot of people today, with me being one of them, help you celebrate the massive achievement that is graduating from college, especially at an institution such as ours. But I also hope you take the time to really think about the fleeting moments you've experienced here, that in this capacity, you're never going to experience ever again. I think taking that time, hopefully in this moment, to reflect about a paper, a project you're especially proud of, protests you attended, a classmate you stood up for, or a community event you threw, is all I really wanted to accomplish today with the time I have. I'm so proud of all of you. I'm so honored to be up here in front of you, and I cannot wait to see the legacy, the change, and the voice you create in the world, both fleeting and everlasting as Pomona College alumni. Wishing you all my love, Nirali. That was beautiful, Nirali. And Andrea, thank you. I'm pleased to introduce Professor Donna Donna M. DeGrazia, conductor, David J. Baldwin, professor of music, and choral conductor, as well as the Pomona College Glee Club, who will perform two musical selections.
it is my distinct honor to introduce Pomona's first Nobel Prize winning alumna, Jennifer Doudna. <laughs> Jennifer likely had no idea that a simple act by her father, placing a new science book on her bed to read, would be set in motion a series of events that would lead to her becoming one of the most groundbreaking scientists of the modern era. Jennifer credits that early reading of the double helix as a transformational moment when she realized that women could be successful scientists too. Jennifer. <laughs> Jennifer is wi most widely recognized for developing the gene editing technology called CRISPR, co-opting a mechanism bacteria use to fight off viral infections and transforming it into precise molecular scissors that can modify the genes of any living organism. Her discovery has already revolutionized the treatment of human genetic diseases like sickle cell disease and cancer. <laughs> and <laughs> and will allow us to address major societal challenges such as food insecurity in our climate impacted world. This, wor this work earned Jennifer and her collaborator, Emmanuel Charpentier, the 2020 Nobel Prize in Chemistry, the first awarded to an all woman team. Girl power. <laughs> Since this discovery, only ten, 10 short years ago, nearly every molecular biologist has integrated CRISPR in the day-to-day -day operations of their labs, including my own teaching and research labs. CRISPR is fast, easy, and accessible, allowing even our high school PACE students to use and understand this technology. <laughs> Jennifer's remarkable career has taken her from the halls of the chemistry department here at Pomona, where she where she developed a close mentor relationship with Professor Fred Greeman and got her first taste of research with biochemistry professor Sharon Panasenko, to Harvard and Boulder, where she was trained by two Nobel laureates, I'm starting to see a trend here, <laughs> to her independent faculty positions at Yale and Berkeley, with a couple of detours to start some biotechnology companies and an institute in her spare time. <laughs> From her tales of this journey, there are three things I have especially come to admire about Jennifer as a scientist. First, she finds a way to balance her drive for discovery with a compassionate humanity that celebrates collaboration and inclusion. Second, she acknowledges the societal impacts of her work and the disproportionate effect it may have on, on marginalized communities and leads efforts to develop guidelines for the ethical use of CRISPR technology. And third, she is an inspirational role model for a new generation of scientists, women scientists in particular, who see themselves in her image. Representation matters. For this new generation, all it will take is for someone to take Jennifer's book about the discovery of CRISPR gene editing and place it on the desk of an eager student such as yourself, and the cycle will renew. Madam President, it is my, on behalf of the Board of Trustees and the faculty of Pomona College, it is my very great honor to present Jennifer Doudna for the degree of Doctor of Science. It is my honor on behalf of the trustees of Pomona College to present a degree of Doctor of Science in Pomona College honoris causa to Dr. Jennifer Doudna. This is really amazing, an amazing moment. I want to start by thanking Professor Olson for that very kind, very generous introduction. Thank you. 
And, and then secondly, I want to say congratulations, graduates and fellow Sagehens. So proud of all of you. And, and thirdly, I want to say to President Starr and the Board of Trustees and, and faculty and colleagues here, thank you so, so much for including me in your special moment. It's just a real thrill for me to be here. Now, I have to be very honest with you. That so, so the first time I gave a speech at graduation, I was 17 years old. And I was, you know, I was graduating from high school in Hilo, Hawaii, where I grew up. And I was incredibly nervous, and I was so nervous that I got up in front of the crowd and I kind of froze, and I, I really, I didn't know what to say. And I feel, you know, a few years have gone by since then, and a few things have happened since then. I feel, nonetheless, the same sense of anticipation and excitement today for all of you because of what you're, what you're about to embark on in your, in your journey. So, um, you know, I, um, I, uh, had an extraordinary experience here at Pomona because I came here, I was quite young, I was 17. I came from Hilo, Hawaii, and I came by myself. My parents you know, were um, faculty at the University of Hawaii, but didn't have a lot of money and didn't have the means to come and visit the campus beforehand. So they literally put me on a plane by myself and I arrived here in Claremont. I, I checked into Mud Hall where I lived freshman year. Some of you may know it. Uh, <laughs> And, and what happened was that it, was ju it just turned into an incredible experience for me because it opened the door to so many opportunities. When I was growing up in Hilo, I was kind of a nerdy kid. You know, I loved, I loved science and math. I knew I loved chemistry, thanks to Miss Wong, my high school chemistry teacher. Wherever you are, Miss Wong, thank you very much. And I, I knew I wanted to study biochemistry, which was one of my attractions to come to Pomona, but I didn't know how to do it. I didn't know how to get into a laboratory. And fortunately, the work study program here gave me that opportunity. I had a chance to do things like water orchids and um, wash glassware. And, uh, and I was thrilled to do it. You know, I was so excited just to be in a real research laboratory for the first time. But eventually, I got to do what I really wanted to do, which was I really wanted to work for a summer in the lab of my biochemistry professor, Sharon Panasenko. And she gave me that opportunity to come and do a real research project with her where I learned amazing things. We were studying bacteria and how they, how they respond to starvation. And what I learned for the first time about myself was that I could, I could do this, you know? I could do experiments that weren't written down anywhere. They weren't, there wasn't a right answer to get because nobody knew the answer. And that's really what research is all about. And after that summer experience here at Pomona, I was absolutely hooked and I realized that this is what I wanna do with my life. I wanna be a scientist. But the big question was, you know, could I really do that? I didn't know. And uh, when I left Pomona, so I graduated in 1985, which probably sounds like maybe ancient history to people here, but um, 85, I had, um, you know, I had the opportunity to go to, first I went to, to Boston, to Harvard for graduate school, and then I went to Boulder, Colorado, where I trained, I did my postdoctoral work. And, uh, and then my path eventually led me to, uh, to the University of California, Berkeley where I'm very proud to work at a public university that where we really like, like a place like Pomona, we really try to open the door to everyone that wants to come and study and learn and give them opportunities in their life. And through that experience, that led me in, in various directions in my research, but eventually to CRISPR, which began, as you heard a little bit in the introduction, as an extraordinary, but frankly, very small curiosity-driven collaboration with another scientist, Emmanuel Charpentier. And together with our students, we started researching uh, something that seemed very esoteric at the time, namely how do bacteria fight viral infection? And that led to a, an understanding of the chemistry of that process that allowed us to harness it as a powerful technology for altering the DNA in any cell and doing it with a level of precision that wasn't possible before. And importantly, the technology is not, it's not so difficult to use that, that people can't readily adapt it and adopt it. And as you heard, and I'm so pleased to, to know this, that it's now been woven into not only uh, uh, colleges and you know, various kinds of 
uh, 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 institutional and, and company operations, but also uh, high school teachers. You know, we've been working with the Berkeley High uh, teachers in, in our own town and many other teachers around the country who have been able to adopt CRISPR as a, a technology that they can use with their students as a, as a teaching tool and, and to give students a handle on, on you know, the sort of the real way that scientists are now manipulating DNA in the lab and in, as you heard, also in, ap in important applications in the future. So I just really want to, to share with you that, you know, I think in my experience in life, I think that, you know, the, probably the most important thing, I've met a lot of people that are a lot smarter than me, believe me, um, but I think, you know, what I've observed, and I observe this now in the, in the students that I work with in my own lab, is that I think that, you know, real success comes when you identify what you're passionate about doing, and then you do it 110%. You just really go after it. If I could tell you how many times people ch told me, oh, that'll never, that experiment will never work, or that's kind of a silly idea, or, you know, even my high school guidance counselor telling me girls don't do science, um, you know, uh, you know, if I had listened to that, I probably wouldn't be here now. So, you know, I think having a degree of persistence is really important. I think we heard that from both of our wonderful uh, student speakers this morning. And, and I would just encourage all of you to think about that as you go forward. We all face challenges in our life, in our personal life, in our professional life, and that's just a part of, a part of living. It's a part of being human. But I think what sets apart those that uh, really are successful in whatever they want to do is just embracing those challenging moments and turning them as much as possible into opportunity. And again, I really appreciated that message that we heard from our student speakers this morning. So thank you, thank you. Congratulations, everyone. I'm thrilled to be here to celebrate with you. Congrats. Stuart Smith is one of nine members of his family who attended Pomona College over the last 90 years. And to think that this relationship with the college began with a chance encounter. Stuart's father, Russ, was on his way to the University of Redlands which had, we, to accept their offer of admission with financial support when he stopped at Pomona College, which had admitted him but without financial aid. Clarence Stover, who was then in the admissions office, overheard the conversation, and this led to a job as a carpenter's assistant, which made Pomona affordable. And that was in 1932. 32 years later, in 1964, Stewart entered Pomona College. He remembers being an insecure student who had done well in high school and played basketball, but was shy. Not long after he moved in, all the men in his first year class were led to the wash for an unstated reason. <laughs> this was when gender spe specific initiation rituals were permitted. Once there, they were told to pick a leader. Someone that Stuart had met on the walk to the wash shouted out his name and Stuart Smith became that leader. And lead he did. He was sophomore class president, and chaired the student court. He also played freshman basketball and joined the Pi Mu Epsilon fraternity. But Stewart did even more. He distinguished himself academically, majoring in economics and minoring in mathematics, and was elected to Phi Beta Kappa and graduated magna cum laude. He went on to Harvard Law School, which he reported later was less intense than his academic work at Pomona. <laughs> Upon graduating from law school, he worked in the antitrust division of the Justice Department for two years and then joined the Paul Hastings Law Firm in Los Angeles. In 1979, he founded the Kinsmith Financial Corporation, which offered investment management and financial planning services. But that was just his day job. Stewart also was invited to join the boards of directors of several companies, and he began to give back serving on the boards of the Huntington Library, Art Museum and the Botanical Gardens, the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles, and Kidspace, the Children's Museum in LA. He also was the director of Community Television of Southern California, KCET, 
and the Polytechnic School in Pasadena, president of the San Marino National Little League, and a white suitor member of the Pasadena Tournament of Roses. Closer to home, Stewart served as an overseer of the Claremont University Consortium, and most important of all, he joined Pomona's Board of Trustees in 1988, serving for nearly 30 years, including nine as chair. He helped hire two presidents and headed the Daring Minds campaign, and during his tenure on the board, Pomona's endowment grew from 230 million to over $3 billion. His generous service enabled much of what the college is today. And to think that it began with a chance encounter with Clarence Stover. Madam President, on behalf of the Board of Trustees and the faculty of Pomona College, it is my very great honor to present Stuart Smith for the Doctor of Laws. It is my honor on behalf of the Board of Trustees of Pomona College to present Stuart Smith with the Honorary Doctor of Laws in, Pom in Pomona College, Honoris Causa. When Gabby, when President Starr presented this to me just a moment ago, her final words were honoris causa. Now I've heard that phrase ever, other, at other occasions like this, so uh, I looked it up. And <laughs> you classics majors already know this, of course, but uh, it turns out that honoris causa translates as, we're just, we're just pretending to grant you this doctorate, <laughs> so don't let it go to your head. <laughs> I promise to try. Uh, I am, in fact, uh, deeply honored and pleased, um, um, and I thank the trustees, the faculty, President Starr, and also Professor Yamashita for your very kind and articulate words. As Sam said, my dad enrolled at Pomona 90 years ago, and ever since, the college has been a core passion for my family and for me, and has continues forward now with my daughter, Mackenzie, as a trustee. Uh, dad also received an honorary degree from Pomona College 37 years ago. And his life of uh, service to others has been an inspiration to me. And so I feel him here with me today. And that makes this moment um, uh, profoundly meaningful for me. So thank you once again. Uh, congratulations uh, to the prodigious and persevering graduates of 2022. Uh, it wasn't easy, but you have made it. Uh, and to, I offer my congratulations to your families as well. A while back, I saw a, a New Yorker cartoon that showed a mom and a dad and their high school son in the family kitchen. And the mom speaks and she says, son, your father and I have decided to support, to completely support you for the rest of your life. We've calculated that that will be cheaper than sending you to college. Now, I, I get it, I, I put four kids through private school, so I, I, know what, I know what that means. But this cartoon is, of course, apocryphal. The value proposition offered by places like Pomona is extraordinarily favorable. Uh, actually, it's a rather brilliant investment on your part. And the benefits should ripple far beyond your families and your communities, as I will explain. But to get the economic return issue out of the way, uh, the data consistently show that liberal arts graduates do earn more in the long run than those who specialize early. Your intellectual agility will prevail, and as you've probably heard before, those specialists are gonna end up working for you. <laughs> more, more importantly, as a president of Yale observed, uh, the, fundamental, the most fundamental value of a liberal education is that it makes life more interesting. That's true, but I'll add that it also makes you more interesting. In any case, the tuition bill to you, even before reductions for financial aid, 
covered only about half of the college's actual cost to provide your education. You did get a great deal. Notably and curiously, this windfall resulted from the efforts of people that you have never actually met, but who walked these very grounds before you. Pomona College was established in the late 19th century on a dusty plain in a bankrupt hotel just a few blocks from here. And since then, it's arisen to the top rung of American undergraduate education, propelled by exceptional faculty, students, and administrators, and also by many remarkable volunteers. Some of those volunteers have, of course, have of course offered wealth, but others have uh, generously tendered themselves, their work and their wisdom in service to Pomona College. This seamless process, largely altruistic, in relaying itself torchlight from one, from one generation to the next, explains the college's excellence today. But it's also a great demonstration of a more universal principle that I hope to, that you, today's graduates, will take to heart. After my junior year, a Pomona buddy and I camped around Europe. Uh, one, late one uh, rainy afternoon, uh, our gas tank ran, ran dry on the German Autobahn. So we flipped a coin, and I stepped out into the pouring rain and setting sun to hitchhike for gas. Now, you understand this is the late 60s. I've got really long hair. I've got granny glasses and an old beat-up Volkswagen van. Uh, but almost immediately, a speeding black Mercedes pulled up right next to me, and out emerged a middle-aged uh, gentleman uh, in a business suit. And without hesitation, he got down on one knee and connected our car's uh, bumpers with a chain. While we were being towed, um, Tom and I were astonished, and we pulled together about $10 in Deutschmarks. And when we got to the gas station, I offered this man our, our gratitude and our small gift. Uh, the man, um, still dripping wet, uh, leaned close and said to me in broken English, uh, uh, no, when I'm in trouble, you help me. And then he got into his Mercedes and was off into the night. Today, when this Autobahn moment returns to me, as it often does, I certainly hear the simple pay it forward message. But I'm also struck with a deeper realization that we collectively share a burden as the current, con current conservators of nothing less than the human spirit. Uh, our predecessors have favored us with their beneficence and their productivity. Pomona College is one example of that. And in turn, they challenge us to respond reciprocally with uh, generous acts of our own before then passing that same flame to our successors. We're all in this together, and perhaps that's the essence of a thriving civilization. Three years ago, the Gallup organization uh, interviewed 1.3 individu million individuals in uh, 125 countries to determine the relative generosity of citizens around the world. They inquired about who had recently helped a stranger, donated to a charity, or volunteered for a charity. Good news, the U.S. finished first. Now you're saying, well, sure, a, a, a wealthier nation is going to have more generous people. But the connection to wealth is not otherwise borne out in the study. Uh, for example, Myanmar finished second, closely behind the U.S. Engaging in frequent acts of uh, generosity does not require wealth, nor is it consistently correlated with wealth. Anyone can be generous, but all is not perfect. The U.S. did quite well on the questions about charitable giving and helping strangers, but in the category of individual volunteering of time and effort to charitable work, the American response was substantially weaker. And I'm hoping that maybe that's where you come in. You may not today realize how much you have to offer. I certainly didn't 54 years ago when I was in your place. At Pomona, I, I did well in economics and math but I also took courses in things like art and music and literature, and I'll just say it wasn't quite as natural for me. But I had no idea of the seeds that were being planted. Later, I was surprised to find myself migrating from careers in law and finance into major leadership roles at some very unlikely not-for-profits, including an art museum, uh, a dance company, uh, several research libraries, a theater company, a botanical garden, and of course, a certain liberal arts college. I didn't see any of that coming on the day of my graduation, but I can tell you that it's been incredibly, incredibly rewarding. What nonprofit organizations like these have in common is that they are driven by compelling and deeply felt ideals, by their missions, 
Pomona, as an example at hand, does not seek to make a profit or to um, uh, judge its ultimate worth in financial terms. Rather, its purpose is to uh, do a great job at intensely educating the leaders of tomorrow, that would be you, at a discounted price supported by tuition, philanthropy, and volunteer time and effort. This is, this is virtuous work, the pursuit of a calling, a mission. Such mission-driven public charities are abundant in the U.S. There's over 1.3 million of them, and they make up almost 6% of America's GDP. And they abound in their variations, dealing with education, environmental causes, animal rights, health issues, civil rights, religious faiths, the arts and humanities, and so on, promoting the human spirit almost without limit. Financial support of any kind is, of course, welcomed at such nonprofits. I have in hand here a letter uh, uh, dated June 3, 1939, from Pomona, from Pomona College to my dad, whose name is now on the campus center. Dear Mr. Smith, I want to personally thank you on the behalf of the college for your gift of $5 to the scholarship fund. Yeah, you got to start somewhere, right? So. <laughs> But leaving money aside, charities across the board also seek the personal involvement of people exactly like you, having as you do such well-developed uh, problem-solving skills and advanced perspectives on the world. Here's a small example. I wasn't much older than you when I got involved in, with my local hometown children's museum, which Sam mentioned. Uh, I, I, it quickly became evident to this econ major that the museum was being financially crushed by the rent that it was having to pay to be housed in an, in an unused school gymnasium. So I made an appointment with the superintendent of the school district and we sat down and I argued, no wait, it's, this museum shouldn't be paying a rent at all to the, to the school district. Rather, the school district should be paying the children's museum for providing such a valuable resource to the community. Now, we debated this, but he did finally agree. And this turnabout turn, uh, turned out to be a vital lifeline for that children's museum and it's today thriving uh, over 40 years later. In moments like these, In moments like these, when uh, an insight has sh sharpened the course of a uh, mission-driven organization, I have experienced immense personal gratification, often much more so than when I've been able to donate dollars. So, in your bargain with Pomona, you actually got something extra for your tuition and your hard work. You will have fulfilling careers, and you will astound everyone with how interesting you are. But you also bear skills promising a still broader impact. Find a mission that ignites your passion, perhaps based on an experience here at Pomona, and take it on. Take it on. You are the newest torchbearers in a long, reciprocating, very human tradition of altruism, one that has benefited you. And I hope you will relay this light forward as a generous volunteer. Thank you and congratulations again on this very special day. <clears throat>
have tested positive for COVID-19 and are unable to join us. So may I ask for please warm rounds of applause for two of your fellow classmates, Ruby Simons. and Jonathan Rushton. <laughs> Ruby and Jonathan, you are with us in our hearts and we're sorry that we, you cannot be with us today. Okay, let us begin. Dungran Derek Jin. Anna Jane Sipovich. <laughs> Catherine Yi May Immergluck. Eleanor Ashton Mackey. <laughs> Emily Jean Vamas. <laughs> Daniel Yanimi Agbeo. Glory Elagosa Imufa. <laughs> Abdul Basit Ajay Bay. Jacob Kareem Al Husseini. <laughs> Isabella Victoria Beltran Alcaraz. <laughs> Altan Tukul Bilgun. Naomi Amuzize. Margarita Andriasi. Abigail Keeley Andrews. Katarina Love Eris. Myrika Rain Arviso Yaza. Aubrey Ann Aust. Hannah Israel Avalos, magna cum laude. <laughs> Maddie Morris Jones. <laughs> Alita Doctors Schaefers, cum laude. Kevin Ayala. Yeah. 
Clark Joshua Baker, magna cum laude. Abigail Clara Ball. Anna Alexandra Barker. Madeline Peichan Barthwu. Jordan Mark Solomon Battaglia. Maria Andrea Bedoya. Mercy Catherine Bickle, magna cum laude. Eve Catherine Bishop. Isaac Blackburn Johnson, cum laude. Paige Nicole Blackwell. Isabel Sales Osborne Blaha, magna cum laude. Eric Arneson Blair. <laughs> Stephen Robert Bloomstrom. <laughs> Fernando Bolio. Aiden John Boppert. Kelsey Morgan Brayford. Hannah Jean Brockovich. Jet Austin Bronstein. <laughs> Max Mikhail Boratoglu. Madison Bella Brothers. <laughs> Susanna Claire Budd. <laughs> Makeda Marie Bullock Floyd. Sarah Levine Birch, cum laude. <laughs> Catherine Sarah Bergstaller. <laughs> Thomas Martin Burke, cum laude. C. 
Sydney G. Butler. Inging Tsai. Isabel Cummings Callahan. Jose Francisco Caranazla Silas, magna cum laude. David Michael Carroll. Amelia Celinda Carter. Evan J. Selzo. <laughs> Samantha Yi Ying Chang. <laughs> Elias Oliver Chung. Nathan Gill Charles. <laughs> Ashley Chung. Claire Sina Chung, magna cum laude. Kira K. Chow, magna cum laude. Christine Yuchen Chow. Cameron Clark. Rowie Cohen, cum laude. <laughs> Madeline Maria Colantis, cum laude. <laughs> Michael Patrick Collins. Ryan James Arthur Collins. <laughs> Jansen Thomas Comadima. <laughs> Darian Corrales Barantes. Sianna Lizeth Correa. <laughs> Dakota Noel Crookston. <laughs> Sophia Corinne Patricia Dartnell, magna cum laude. Isabel Suzanne Davis, cum laude.
Clarissa Mia de la Garza. Daniel Nathan DeBear. Jaden Joseph De Pina. Alexandra Claire Dean Cum Laude. Mark Emmanuel Diaz. Guido Dominguez. Christina Dong. <laughs> Melissa Disnoreva. <laughs> Matthew Lachlan Everly. Cameron Taylor Edward Cum Laude. Yeah. Dylan Nile Jimmy Elliott. Yeah. Layla Ekatami. Yasmin Equitami. <laughs> Elise Nicole Endlich, cum laude. <laughs> Camille Caroline English. Evangeline Marjorie Erickson. <laughs> Luis Samuel Estrada. <laughs> Abigail Lammers O'Young. Matthew Stanley Evans. Yeah. Yeah. Lillian Jiawen Feldman, cum laude. Yeah. Jeremias Figueroa. Asher Santiago Fikre. Evan Somerville Flitz. Hannah Quinn Fraley. Nathan C. Freedy. <laughs> Dolores Elizabeth Ferichi. <laughs> Martin Fuchs. Aditya Gandhi, magna cum laude. <laughs> Yijia Gao, magna cum laude. <laughs> Mary, 
Michelle Garcia. Abigail Gonzalez Avia. Mariana Gonzalez Vega. Jenny Shankar Rose Goodkin, summa cum laude, Rena Gurley Archibald High Scholarship Prize winner. Larrick Brian Gordon Cuevas, cum laude. Kellen Alexander Grant, cum laude. Camilla Shia Guo. Adam Guo, magna cum laude. Owen Mason Halstad. Clayton Stanley Hamilton. Charles Henry Hammond III. Taylor Deanne Hansen. Edmund Havener. Nonea Mahina Haynes. Rana A. Heya, cum laude. <laughs> Young He. <laughs> Peter James Heckendorn. Samuel Gilbert Hernandez, Jr. <laughs> Joseph L. Hess Withrow. <laughs> Kelly Ho. Vanessa Kristen Shaw. Brady Huang, cum laude. Annabelle May Heater. Matthew Wynn Ivler, cum laude. <laughs> Talia Renee Ivory. <laughs> Evan Sky Jacobs. Khadija T. Jallo.
Tanvi Junjunwala. Xiao Fang Jiang. Guo Chuan Jin, cum laude. Priscilla Jin. Maya Lindsay Jodwani. Sanjar Naichien Junsbei. Musa Sheka Kumara. Amy Myung Kanashiro. Varshika Suzanne Kantadai. Rachel Damewood Howard. Chloe Ann Kirstein. Mundisa Leithley Kiswa Cum Laude. <laughs> Kathy Eugen Kim. Chana Kim. Hyun Kim. Jaden Isaiah Kim. Young Soo Ko, magna cum laude. Xander Chinyuan Ku, summa cum laude. Adam Mitsuru Kubota. Jessica Yitung Kuo. <laughs> Ashley Sunila Kialem. <laughs> Taylor Adeline Adams Langdon. Alberto Manuel Largabel. <laughs> Rachel Yi Lao, magna cum laude. <laughs> Amber Patricia Lee, cum laude. Daisy Hetty Lee. Yeah. 
Sean Sung Su Lee, cum laude. Kyra Levy. Dearis M. Lewis Mayfield. Kala Shuhan Lee, magna cum laude. Christine Ja Lin, cum laude. Rose Elizabeth Linkus. Patrick Pei Liu. <laughs> Timothy Shitao Liu. Elin Elaine Liu. Megna Isabella Lohia. <laughs> Alexandria Claire Long. <laughs> Selena Edith Lopez. <laughs> Amy Elizabeth Lowndes. Jason Fay Liu. Emily Elizabeth Lunger. Brendan Kwan Lee, cum laude. Liam Cole McDonald, magna cum laude. Jeremy Peter Adams. Rowan Rothfuss Macy, cum laude. Alejandro Jose Maldonado. <laughs> Nicholas Dyland Bajales Masalo, Marsano. Aurora Elizabeth Masari, cum laude. Noah Alexander Massillon. Stevie Marie Matheny. Paul Chen McKinley, cum laude. Luke S. Mears. Jared Anthony Mejia, summa cum laude, Rena Gurley Archibald High Scholarship Prize winner. Lucas Ming Mankoff.
Sean Philippe Menton. Zena Ann Meyer. William Nathan Miles. Alfredo Eladio Moreno. Razaki Meru Mohammed. Elena Beatrice Muhal. Virgil Allen Muyema Mana. Rachel Clancy Murdoch. Christopher Anthony Murdy, cum laude. <laughs> Faisal Mustafa. <laughs> Omar Zintan Mwinala Uri. Sebastian Kehala Neaho Ramos. Siddharth Namachiviam Cum Laude. Christopher Stephen Nardi Cum Laude. Test for Michael Nigasha Nigusi. Anna Newman Magna Cum Laude. Calvin Ng Hao. Mugali Guabo. Nak Dui Tran Win. Fuang Thiemin Ming Nguyen, summa cum laude, Rena Gurley Archibald High Scholarship Prize winner. <laughs> Francis Scott Manuma Northwood. <laughs> Max Harold Ober. Kenneth Oteano Ocean. <laughs> Luciana Helene Underweiser Gold, cum laude. <laughs> Helena Tia Ong. Kofi Dua Ose Opari, magna cum laude.
Stephen Osorio. Nadia Manosa Paquin. Kyung Na Park. Virginia E. Pascal. Dante Anthony Pascage. Emma J. Paulini, magna cum laude. <laughs> Helen Grace Paulini. Coco Rose Percival. Gabrielle Marie Olson, cum laude. Andrea Alejandra Perla. Sadie Claire Perry. Noah Sanford Plass. Laney Karen Pope. Nina Potishman, magna cum laude. Jada Kristen Potts. Malik Pablo Power. Same Prakash. Aaron Mackenzie Puckett, cum laude. Lauren June Casada. Hermo Isaiah Quispe. Emily Renee Range. Emily May Ramirez. Antonio Abad Ramos. Jean Rasmussen. Jeannie Rasmussen. Natalie Micah Raver Goldsby. Andreo Rafael Reed. Benjamin Mark Riker. Anna Xiaoshu Rezik. Antonio Gonzalez Ravilla. <laughs> Hannah Eleanor Robertson, cum laude. <laughs> Helena Nicole Robinowitz. <laughs> Gerardo Rodriguez.
Lauren Kareen Rodriguez, cum laude. Maxwell Wallace Rose, magna cum laude. Layla Carolyn Ruffin. Jaden Michael Smith Saldana, cum laude. Phoebe Helen Salloway. Anaya Suluja, cum laude. Lucy Whitman Sandmeyer. Santiago Saravaya. Tunaya Sardushi. Piper Cassidy Sato. Scott Christopher Sherlock. <laughs> Sophie Elizabeth Schnell, cum laude. <laughs> J. Renee Scott. Roland Antar Scott, cum laude. <laughs> Ella Ruby Shutter Davis, magna cum laude. Camille Geraldine Seeley. Anunya Sen. Sydney Yvonne Seymour. Nathan Jayant Shankar, summa cum laude, Rena Gurley Archibald High Scholarship Prize winner. Ilana Susan Shapiro, summa cum laude, Rena Gurley Archibald High Scholarship Prize winner. <laughs> Jenna Shi. <Shee. laughs> Catherine Kimi Shimamoto, summa cum laude, Rena Gurley Archibald High Scholarship Prize winner. Alice Sakura Shin. <laughs> Hannah Nicole Shoemaker, magna cum laude. <laughs> Tonde Rani, Todd Shokinwa. Neha Shushrut Shroti. <laughs> Vaishnav Ridi Surapedi.
Catherine Grace Siegenthaler, cum laude. Glenn Q. Scahill. Aaron Olivia Slichter, magna cum laude. Sean McCray Smith. Archie Joseph Spindler, cum laude. William Royal Stone. Allison Caitlin Sullivan Wu. Ming Huyan Sun. Cum laude. Moe Tsunami. Sarah Anderson Sundermeyer, magna cum laude. Francis Sutton. John David Schultz Donnell, magna cum laude. Danny Ta. Jasper Sidney Tabak. Aaron Lindsay Tallman. Noor Tamari, cum laude. Jose Daniel Tamkin. Jacqueline Brittany Tan. Evelyn May to sell. Victoria Ong Tai. Aaliyah Thomas, cum laude. Adrian Victoria Tong. Alejandro Javier Tovar. <laughs> Celesta Tovar. <laughs> Charity Joy Turnbow. Amaya J. Turner. Sarah Uihara. Carlos Artura Valeria Maltseva. Larissa Velasquez Pazaran. Ramon Franco Quevedo Vejandre, cum laude. (laughs) 
Amira Joyce Adam. Evan Arthur Van Osen. Nicholas John Wokes. Jonathan Bryce Wachtel. Jacob Charles Waldor, magna cum laude. Kyla Denise Walker. Scarlett Wong, cum laude. Alana Wenling Weiss. Jacob Oliver Weiss. Alexandra Sarah Werner. Sophia Landers West. Emily Rose Williams. Robert Xavier Williams IV. Simone Elise Willis. Elisa Harriet Wolf, magna cum laude. Kylie Ho Cheng Wong. Anapat Wong Hirundacha. Brittany Chris Ann Wright. Angela Chia Ye. Nick Yi Cum Laude. Ugin Norbu Yongten. Xingwei Yu, magna cum laude. <laughs> Stephanie Yu. <laughs> Andrew Zhao. Linglin Zhou Ju. Xu Sing Zhu. Eric Raitsi Ju, cum laude. Lucy Jenner Abel. <laughs> Bin Hua Nguyen. Devin Baker. Adrian Haruo Chinen.
Shari J. Sanisa Evangelista. Lydia Abagobes Kile. Afra Ahmed. Nirali Devgan. Andrea Light Pierre. Bachelor of Arts in Pomona College with all the rights and privileges thereunto appertaining. You may move your tassels from the right side to the left. You, the class of 2022 are the only graduating class in the history of this college to have had a year and a half long evacuation dropped right in the middle of your time here. You have been at the front lines of history and those who are with you today have been right there with you. You have climbed a monumental mountain in the midst of a pandemic. And I hope none of us face these trials ever again. But the tenacity and the courage and the creativity and the love and the persistence that have gotten you through, those are yours forever. And, in every challenge that faces you, the grit and grace that got you through will guide you. You experienced a mind-warping time warp into Zoom. Hopefully, that will never need to be repeated. But the reality is that all of you and all of us have been through the strangest, uncontrolled experiment in human history. It was an involuntary experiment in isolation probably the longest period of worldwide isolation humankind has ever experienced. Many of us saw people outside of our homes, rarely, if at all. No controls, no ethics board, no careful notation, no hypothesis to test, except that our isolation would put a pause in this juggernaut long enough for people to find a treatment or a vaccine or a cure. And that part of it worked. But what about the rest of what we went through? 
even in the isolation of this pandemic, you have learned or been reminded of how intertwined our lives are. You've learned how quickly things can change. You've learned how much it is better to be together with nothing in between. Yeah, we were partially connected in the electronic ether by Zoom or social media. You've been through that. Well, what's next? What are you gonna change? I hope that you are the generation that fully inhabits what it means to be together. Truth be told, most of us weren't truly in person and together even when we thought we were together before this pandemic. Even when we were around people in person, we separated ourselves with our handy little devices and we pretend that those things are what connect us to each other through that hilariously falsely named social media. But the very word media comes from the root of mediation, which means something between you, something that separates you, even as much as it might seem to connect. And in a world of blink of an eye change, I really urge you to connect to commit now to community. Don't live in between. I hope you stay tied in lasting ways to the people and the places that have shaped your lives. I hope you go and reunite with your classmates when you get the chance every single time in the years ahead. Tend to your important relationships in real time and in person whenever you can. In the blur of life, of texts and tasks, of triumphs large and small and losses that knock you down, you will never regret it. So today is not only a day of individual pride an individual achievement, though there's plenty of that to celebrate. You are now joining in a new way with a larger community, one that stretches all the way around the globe. We all have our identities as individuals, but please don't lose your communal identity as classmates and friends. You have shared an experience that will deeply shape who you are and who you are becoming. Plato knew this truth well. He knew that education is always about becoming. And he tells a story about something he calls the pharmacon. So a pharmacon is a powerful remedy. And in the Phaedrus, he writes about writing itself as this invention, this technology. It's a tool, it's a remedy for loss. We write to help us remember, okay? But in this story, Socrates is an old man. He's an old man with human failings. And there's something ironic about an old man writing about how much you need to remember. And he tells us that writing itself in helping us to remember sometimes will make us forget how to do it entirely. What Plato tells us is that any aid can become a crutch and that the cure can be a poison too. So think about this, the very technology we relied on to keep us together, to get us through this pandemic, that same technology sowed distrust 
and confusion and dismay across the globe. While we can recognize that as a poison, we also have to recognize the paradox. One of the most amazing and affecting collaborations in human history was achieved using the same technology in their hunt for a vaccine. You had scientists around this world, from Turkey to Texas, from the United Kingdom, every place, that's right, every place. We had to work together as humans to defeat, defeat something so small that billions of them could fit in a drop of water. And we did it. The people who did that, they used every means at hand, right? They were emailing, they were using high performance computing, they were on Zoom, they were on telephones 24 hours a day all around this world to save lives. They also had to have face-to-face -face conversations. You know, they had to touch people so sick with an illness they didn't understand. They had to hold their hands as they passed from this earth when their families couldn't be there. Remember that you need one another, okay? You will do far more together than you ever can do on your own. Hold tight to the people that keep you moving. Because you know what? The rest of us are gonna need you. We're gonna need you to be present in every way you can over the coming days. Remember two years ago when the pandemic hit, there were med students and nursing students and farm tech students, everyone. Their education went full stop, but they had to graduate and go out and heal. And they did it. it wasn't how they planned but they did it. There was no mediation for them. There was nothing in between. For the next several minutes, I want you to try a little experiment with me, okay? I want to issue you a challenge, too. I want you to put down the in-between, okay? I want you to double down on being right here together. Practice not GAF what people think. Don't. Just be here and let your mind be your oculus, okay? And close your eyes or just cast out with your heart for just a minute. Take a deep breath and soothe your soul. See if you can feel around you the people who are here. See if you can feel the love that is all around you from the people here. You're with a community that supported you through the darkest times. This is real life. And this is living. Open your eyes back up. And I want you to take a lesson, one last lesson. Our goal for you is for you to live. To live well, not just to achieve. And I want you to live differently. Look for the ways to get rid of what's in between you and the world. I know you will live well. I know you will live better. You will make all of our lives better. We are gonna be here for you, rooting for you every day. 
And today, we're gonna cheer you one more time as you head from our campus out to the world. Pursue your promises and your possibilities. Stay connected to each other. Congratulations. We love you.